सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्वी नावधी तमस्तु मा विद्विषावहै ओम शांते 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 समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतम करुणामय नमामि चिन्मयम देवम सत नम श्री शंकरानंद गुरुपादाबुजन्मने सविलास महामोह ग्राह क्रास लेट्स रीड वर्सेस भाती चेत भातु नाम पोषण महिक तत यद सद्भासमानं तत मिथ्या स्वप्न गजावत जाति व्यक्ति देहि देह गुणद्रव्ये यथा पृथक यथवास्तु पार्थक्यम कोत्र विस्मय बुद्धोपी वेदो नो चिते निरूढ़ याति चेतदा अनेकाग्रिया संशयाद्वा रूढ़ोस्वद अप्रमत्तोध्यानाचन कुरु प्रमाण युक्ति Okay. So what is happening here? So Swami Vidya Ranya Ji is taking us into this inquiry into space, right? Space and existence. Again, why? Because his point is that he wants to prove the unreality of the world, the falsity of the world. and how he starts doing that is through proving the five elements are false because the world comes from five elements so what is his logic how is space or what we call akasha false unreal how is it illusory as compared to sat or existence so what we've seen so far is this that when you look at space and existence they are two separate things right they are two separate things and space and existence have different names and their names convey different things so we know that there is something called space we know there is something called existence now what is the relationship between the two because ordinarily when we say this word space exists we don't think more than that time exists space exists world exists we don't think more than that but here we're thinking about what is the relationship between space and existence and it first appears that existence is a property of space that space is the main thing and existence is the property but then swami vidya ranya ji says wait let us see what is the substance and what is the property or in sanskrit what we call what is the aadhara aadhara that which supports aadheya that which is supported or held so he says if you look at existence existence is adhika vritti it is all pervading it is much much more pervading than space space is noona vritti space is less pervasive so existence is more pervasive because it's all pervasive but space is less pervasive so just like if we look at the gold and the bangle gold is more pervasive bangle is less pervasive how do we know because bangle is in the gold 
right? And gold is gold is there, it's in the bangle, but gold is also in the bracelet, gold is also in the necklace, gold is also in the earring. It's not limited to the bangle, right? So we say because gold is not limited to the bangle, gold is definitely more pervasive. In the same way, existence is not limited to space. There's existence beyond space. Hmm? There's existence beyond space, such as in deep sleep. So existence is there beyond space. And existence, therefore, is more pervading and space is less pervading. So space rests in existence. It rests in existence. It's not that existence rests in space. Space rests in existence. Okay, fine. So then what? Then, now we know that there are two separate things because one is the substance, existence, and one is like a property, space. One is the supporter, existence. One is the supported space so they are different okay so what if they are different if they are different existence is the substance so what is different from existence is non-existent so space then becomes non-existent it's different from existence so it's non-existent but then space appears so therefore space is called mithya so this we have seen in verse 17, right? That which is not there but appears is called mithya. It's called unreal. It's called illusion. So using this logic step by step, Swami Vidya Aranyaji tells us that space is actually an illusion. It's an illusion. Hmm? Space rests in existence and therefore space is different from existence. What is different from existence is non-existent, and but you can still see it. Okay, therefore it is an appearance. And then one other logic that I had given you was from Mandukya Upanishad, where it says, "Ada vante chayan nasti vartamane pi tattha." So that which is not there in the beginning and not there in the end. In the middle, it's also not there, even if it appears. Even if it appears. Hmm? So what, what do we mean? So let us say um, in deep sleep. Ah, okay, slowly. I'll speak slowly. In deep sleep, space is not there. Huh? Space is not there. But when we wake up, we feel space. We are able to cognize some sp sense of space. And then again, when we sleep, space is not there. So when we're sleeping, space is not there. When we wake up, we're able to cognize some sort of space. And when we go back to sleep, space is not there. That means existence is not inherent or intrinsic in space. At times, space loses existence. It loses its existence, its validity such as in deep sleep, it loses its existence. Therefore, existence is not uh, it, the nature of space. The nature of space is to appear and disappear, appear and disappear, like what it does. Hmm? So when we just think logically, think logically that this is what space is, then everything becomes clear. That space is not intrinsically existing on its own right. On its own right. Mm -hmm. It has a borrowed existence. Existence is not intrinsic to it because if it was intrinsic to it, it would always exist. But it doesn't always exist. And that space not always existing is our direct experience. It's not even just a, a notion. It is our direct experience. Hmm? Now, with Swami Vidyaranyaji has explained this clearly. He said, okay, this is what the logic is. 
now somebody might say, okay, granted, uh, there is a distinction between space and existence, granted, but I'm not firm in it. I, as a seeker, am not seeing space as an illusion. I still feel it's a reality. Hmm? Like, uh, I'll give you our own example. The body exists. Again, here you have to apply the same logic. Body exists. What is existing in what? Huh? Body exists in existence. Existence is a substratum and body is the property you want to say or that which is supported, right? And existence and body are different. If existence is existence and body is different from existence, then body must be non-existent, <laughs> right? But it appears, so therefore we call it mithya. And we also see that the body, if existence was intrinsic to the body, then the body would always exist. Huh? This body would always exist. But in dream state, it is not there. In a deep sleep state, it is not there. So it's existing, not existing, existing. Huh? It is appearing. Hmm? So we have to clearly test this out. We're testing it out with Akasha. But also test it out with our body. Test it with our mind. Test it with our ego. Ego is existing at some point when we wake up and then not existing. Existing, not existing. This is the nature of our body. It's the nature of our mind. It's the nature of the ego. It's the nature of the entire world. This kind of thing. And he says now, if we're not firm in it, it could be two problems. We could have either of the problems or we could have both problems. Problem number one, anaika kriyat. Anaika kriyat means the mind is not able to hold it. Hmm? As we saw last time, eka agra. Eka agra means there's only one thing in front of me. And that's where ekagrata comes. Right? There's only one thing in front of me. There's only one goal. And ekagriya means there's so many different things coming to my mind. So one gets distracted. So one problem is distraction. We're not able to hold this thought deep enough to cook it. Hmm? And another problem is samshaya or doubt. So distraction and doubt, these are the two problems. And this is, this is why there is rudi abhava. Rudi means firmness, abhava. There's an absence of firmness. And so what did he say? He said, apramattaha bhava. In the first one, if the problem is distraction, Become attentive. Apramattaha bhava. Become attentive. How does one become attentive? Dhyanat. Dhyanat means, that I'm looking now at verse 73. So if you're following along, this is where I am. He says, do it through dhyana. Dhyana means that single pointed focus on that thought. So keep bringing this bichara this inquiry into the mind and keep the mind there until you and I subjectively are able to do it. We're subjectively able to understand how this body is like this, appearing, disappearing, how the mind is appearing, disappearing, how the world is appearing, disappearing. Hold that thought, hold it and cook it. Hmm? See, what happened is, we, we got a glimpse. Huh? But this glimpse is definitely not enough. It's got to be something totally alive. Huh? Not something shining, like very haphazardly, but something very, very bright and alive. Sometimes, you know, when someone's walking by 
and we look at the person, we don't recognize who they are. But we look at the person, we don't really recognize who they are because we have our headphones or our minds going somewhere. And so we look and we don't really get it. But if we're walking carefully and attentively and we see and we just stare at the person and see who that is, then we get to say, oh, this is that person, right? Very clearly we can see. Very, very clearly. We don't need any more than that. So what's happening is we're doing like side glances to this knowledge. Unfortunately, this is what we do. Just like a side glance. Okay, I read it. Okay, it's there and fine. But this is actually not enough because this is just a glimpse. It's not even really knowledge. In the state of dhyana, when we contemplate on it, it becomes ripe. It becomes cooked. And this is necessary for all seekers. Otherwise, if we don't hold the thought, if we don't bring it again and again, we're not with it. We have to sing with it, dance with it, move with it, lift it up, turn it around, just really, really make it so incredibly firm that ah, it's alive. It's got to be alive. So that knowledge becoming alive for us is called dhyana through that concentration. Uh, but okay, there's a, the other problem, anye, uh, anyasmin. In the other problem, vivechanam. My problem is not concentration. My problem is I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about space and existence, space and existence. I'm so confused. I don't know what space. I don't know what existence. I don't know which one is which. Then that means more, more inquiry. Again, re-listening. Again, rethinking. And whenever we have doubts, what's really good is to chart it out and write it down. We have to see it clear in front of our faces. This, 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 this goes with this, 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 this. When we write it down and it's very clear, then the mind becomes doubt-free. So vivechana means it must be clear and I must listen to it again, I must reflect upon it, I must write it down and see what that means to me. So that clarity dawns. And how do we do this? Pramana yukti bhya. Pramana Yukti Pyab means with the help of Pramana, the scriptures and Yukti, Yukti logic. So with the help of logic that is following the scriptures, then what happens? Ruda Tamo Bhavet, then it becomes firm. So how does firmness in knowledge happen? Firmness in knowledge happens when? It happens when? Whatever I've listened to in Shravanam, I had a chance to clarify it in Mananam. And I also had a chance to cook it in Nididhyasana. Really, really cook it and digest it. And when that knowledge goes through this process, Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasana, what comes out is what we call firm knowledge. There is rudi, there is firmness. And this being is sthita pragnya. Hmm? Otherwise, the knowledge is shaky. We get glimpses, we're confused. We don't know what's what. Uh, all, all kinds of things happen. But don't despair. Because if we're shaky, if we're getting a glimpse, that's a step towards firmness. <laughs> firmness doesn't just, it just doesn't go from ignorance to firmness. That's not the way knowledge works. It goes from ignorance to glimpses, to un slowly understanding, to confusion, to doubt, through, you know, unsteadiness, all of that. It goes through all of these phases. It has to, this preparation to be able to really abide and be rooted in the knowledge, it takes long. So we have to go through these phases. And then what happens is Rudy we become firm in it. Hmm? Now, the question is, how, do, how does one know that one has become firm? How do we know we've become firm in this? 
let's say we are questioning. Hmm? So now we see today, verse 74, who is this person who's become firm? Dhyanad manad yukti topi. Dhyanad manad yukti topi. Rudhe be devi atsato ho. Rudhe be devi atsato ho. Nakadachit viat satyam. Nakadachit viat satyam. Sadvastu chidra vannacha. Sadvastu chidra vannacha. Dhyanan mana dyukti topi. Rudhe be devi at sato ho. Nakadachit viat satyam. Sadvastu chidra vannacha. So what does it say here? Dhyanat. Dhyanat means through that contemplation. Manat. Manat here means pramana. Pramana means of knowledge or our scriptures. Yukti taha. Yukti means logic. So due to all of this, which is the scriptures, which is applying logic, which is concentration, rudhe bhede, there is rudhe means in that firm difference, in that firm difference, viyat sato ho, between viyat and sat. Viyat means space, between space and existence. Nakadachit viyat satyam. One will never take space to be true or real. And sadvastu. And one will never take existence to be space or have the properties of space. Sadvastu chidravan nacha. So by means of profound meditation, evidence and logical reasoning, Brahman and Akasha can be known to be different from one another. Akasha will not appear as real, nor Brahman as having the property of space giving. Huh? So very, very beautiful. How do we know we are firm in this knowledge? When that we never, ever, ever take space to be real again. Hmm? We never, kadachit, kadachit means here even a dream. <laughs> it means you don't take space to be real. You know that it is just appearing. You know, uh, one Swamiji wrote very beautifully, it is that you see the unreality. Whatever you see, you know it's unreal. And whatever you don't see, you know it's real. Hmm? So very beautiful. Whatever you see, you know it's unreal because it's seen. It's an object of experience. And whatever is unseen, you know, that sat, that existence, you know that to be real. So one knows that they are firm when there is that uh, unshakability that one will never think that this space is actually real. Enough logic is there, enough clarity is there. And the thought has become so deeply embedded that one's for sure this space is an illusion. And sat, an existence, does not have the quality of space. Existence is not the property of space. One has firm conviction that existence is an independent entity. Existence is an all-pervasive entity. Existence is the substratum of all names and forms. And more so, I am that existence in which everything appears to exist. So one has that firm conviction that they are that existence. And existence is different from space. Hmm? Okay, now what else, how else will this, um, you know, how else will this being see, see this world or see the people? So verse number 75. 
न्यस्य भाति सदा व्योम न्यस्य भाति सदा व्योम निस्तत्व लेख पूर्ववत निस्तत्व लेख पूर्ववत सद्वस्तुपिभात्य सद्वस्तुपिभात्य निछिद्रपुरस्सर निछिद्रपुरस्सर न्यस्य भाति सदा व्योम निस्तत्व लेख पूर्ववत सद्वस्तुपिभात्य निछिद्रपुरस्सर न्यस्य मीन्स ऑफ द नोअर ऑफ द नोअर सदा भाति इट्स ऑलवेज सीन इट्स ऑलवेज शोन व्योम निस्तत्व लेख पूर्ववत दट निस्तत्व निस्तत्व मीन्स द इलूजरीनेस ऑफ ऑफ स्पेस व्योम इज स्पेस व्योम बियत आकाश अदर ऑल स्पेस that illusoriness of space is always there it always shines for them and sadvastu api sadvastu api and that of existence vibhati asya it always shines nichidratva purasaram unassociated with any properties so to a knower akasha always shows its illusoriness and brahman also always shines unassociated with its properties nistatva ullekha purvavat ullekha here means descriptive so that space which is described as a uh, being illusory that is always evident to a knower of brahman always evident to a knower of brahman hmm? so uh, what what does this mean how do the you know how do the the one how does the one with knowledge and the one who is ignorant how do they see this world what's the difference there's a very very beautiful um verse in sadarshana ha uh, bhagavan ramana maharshi ji he brings up this verse and i'll tell you the essence of this verse he says both the ignorant and the one who's wise they see the world but what's different is the ignorant ones they are stuck in the seen they are stuck in the drishya so their minds only go to what's seen but the ones who have knowledge their minds go to the drishya ashraya means to the substratum of all that seen so they stay perceive the same world they interact in the same world they experience the same world but the ignorant or the unwise they focus on only what is seen and only what's seen matters to them and sometimes they don't even know that there's something beyond the seen but the one who has knowledge they go or their focus is on the substratum of all the unseen unseen the the unseen substratum of all the seen <laughs> their focus is on the unseen substratum of all the seen mm -hmm. and and the next verse will say it but it is it is a, a great wonder to them you know why there is uh, so much argument and so much problems and so much conflict about the seen if we look at space how much conflict is there about space this is your space this is my space this is this space this is that space so much conflict about all of that scene and this wise person is wondering why and how did all of this happen it is like that story you know when when the children are sitting down with their parents and they had gone to a carnival and in the carnival you know they purchase various various things and they happen to purchase animal crackers and they're sitting down and there's a brother and there's a sister there's another sister and the brother says i want the elephant cracker and the sister says i want the giraffe cracker and the other sister says i want the cow cracker 
right? And everyone's fighting to get that shape of animal cracker. Everyone's fighting. But the parents say, listen, it's all the same. Put it in your mouth. <laughs> Do you feel the elephant? Do you feel the giraffe? Do you feel the cow? It's all sugar. When you put it in your mouth, it's all sugar. Stop fighting. You know, it's okay if you don't get the giraffe cracker or the cow or whatever it is. It is all sugar. Huh? So like how the parents, when they look at the children fighting over these shapes of animal crackers, this wise person is vismaya. Vismaya is of total wonder how everybody's fighting over shapes of existence. <laughs> Everyone's fighting over one shape of existence or the other shape of existence. How can they fight so much? If they just put it in their heart, it's all existence. Huh? So this one is Nyasya, the one with knowledge. Their vision is very, very different, very, very deep. Mm -hmm. Now, how did, uh, how did it get, you know, very, very deep? How did this knowledge get very deep to that one wise being or the wise ones? So let us see 76. Vasanayam pravridhayam Vasanayam pravridhayam Piyat satyatva vadinam Yat satyatva vadinam Sanmatra bodha yuktam cha Sanmatra bodha yuktam cha Trishtva vismaya te budhaha Trishtva vismaya te budhaha Vasanayam pravrithayam Yat satyatva vadinam Sanmatra bodha yuktam so what happened to this wise being? Buddha. Buddha here means wise. Buddha is also, you know, the enlightened one. Buddha. This wise being. Vasanayam pravidhayam. Vasanayam. In the vasanas. Pravidha, they, they have deepened themselves in the vasana of sat. Uh, and we will, we will come to this. Uh, first, I'll just give you the short meaning. They have deepened themselves in the vasana of sat. And therefore, drishtva, having seen vyat satyatva vadinam, the one who gives reality to space, those people who give reality to space, and sanmatra abodhayuktam, those who have no knowledge, a bodha, have no knowledge of sat, of existence, vismayate, they are in deep wonder. So they wonder at people who still see space as real and who do not have knowledge of existence. They wonder at people who, when they hear the statement space exists, they really feel that space is real. Hmm? Because they're living we say in a different world, but they're living beyond the world. So vismayate, they live life like in wonder. As I told you, right? like the parents with the animal crackers, they live like wondering how everybody's taking this to be real. Huh? So a wise person is thinking, how do we take this body to be real? How do people take this mind to be real? This intellect, this ego to be real? Why so much pass over it? How did the wise being become like this? See, in life, what we are rooted in is how we see the world. Hmm? So if we are rooted in reality, in truth, then we will see truth under, in the, underlying the whole creation. How does one get rooted in? What is this vasanaya? So vasana, we know it comes from the word vas, to dwell, right? In this vasana, it can be good or it can be bad. It can be a good vasana or it can be a bad vasana. But 
the, this is the sequence of how to develop the vasana. Huh? The first step in developing vasanas is the seeker has to focus on good qualities or vasanas, good qualities of vasanas. So uh, develop that vasana of being disciplined, of being timely, of being diligent, of being truthful. A seeker has to first work on themselves and develop these good vasanas. Huh? Then, when the seeker gets to a certain point, then what happens is that chin matra vasana or that brahma vasana. Through knowledge, one gets that brahma vasana. How does one get that brahma vasana? As I said, one has to keep keep contemplating it on it for a long period of time. This is what we call abhyasa. Dirga kala means for a long time. Satu dirga kala. Nairantarya, without breaks. Satkara asevita, with due respect for it. Drida bhumi, that's how something becomes firm. So three things to make something firm is that one has to practice it for a long time, long period of time. One has to practice it without breaks and has to have deep reverence and respect for it. Mm -hmm. And Nididhyasana need not only mean just sitting quietly with it, but it can even mean uh, writing about it. It can even mean reading about it. Uh, when we are very clear about it, reading about it, writing about it, thinking about it, sitting quietly with it, talking about it. It's the whole practice of just being with the knowledge. When we practice just being with the knowledge, we become rooted in knowledge. So for this Buddha, for this wise person, they are with the knowledge. Their mind goes in that. Huh? And it, 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 it now, it, their mind has become avritta chakshuhu. Avritta chakshuhu comes in, uh, Kartopanishad. Their mind has turned in. Whereas our minds, uh, they're so used to going out. <laughs> as soon as we wake up, they're so used to just going out and rushing out. As soon as they wake up, their minds are avritta chakshuhu. When they're out and everything about their minds are also turned within. So this Brahma Vasana comes from being with the knowledge. So the first step is to have that Shuddha Vasana, to cultivate these good qualities, be a good human being. <laughs> because only then, you know, the mind will be calm enough to take this knowledge. If we're not good human beings, we will be so disturbed all the time. How can we hold anything? We can't hold anything because we're affected. Somebody yelled at us. Somebody didn't appreciate us. Somebody did something to us. Our mind is always going there. Huh? So first, the shuddha vasana. One has to come to a, a very a calm, be a good human being, be a calm, understanding, peaceful human being. To some extent, at least. <laughs> and then slowly, this brahma vasana can take root. It can take deep root by being with that knowledge. Huh? And then what happens is one becomes nirvasana. That even that vasana goes away. Huh? And we remain as we are. And that vasana goes away. We just remain as we are. So vasanayam pravritthaya. These impressions are quite deep. Mm -hmm. and just see just think about our lives how deep has the impression of our name become when we were children we had no name no name we came into this world with no name mm -hmm. that's because everyone's name is Atman <laughs> we came with no name and then very deeply for a, maybe one or two years, our parents said, you are Shabani, you are Shabani, again and again and again and again and again. And think how deeply that went in. And now we can't ever forget it. Even if we want to forget it, we can't forget it. Huh? So that also deeply went into us, right? 
So, vasanayam pravrithayam, the knowledge of who we are has to deeply penetrate. And then, uh, then we can enjoy. Uh, and very beautifully, I was reading also the commentary of Sadarshanam. It said that the ones who have this knowledge so deep, only they really enjoy. Others appear to enjoy. <laughs> it's like the movie in the screen, you know? Others are going up and down, up and down with the movie, comedy, tragedy, drama, crying here and there. They're going up and down, up and down, up and down. They're appearing to enjoy life. But the one who knows it's a movie, oh, that one just really enjoys. Nandati, Nandati, Nandati Eva. <laughs> it said in Maja Govindam. Huh? They alone enjoy, they alone enjoy, they alone enjoy. Hmm? So Vismaya, they are alone. One other also thought came to my mind of this vismaya, this wonder. Sometimes for a guru, for our teachers, they are also wondering when is this shishya going to realize? When is this student going to know? When is it going to hit the student? They are also wondering when is that time because they are also waiting for that student to come to this level. Hmm? Vismaya. Okay, all right. Now I know that space is false. Now what do I do? So now he says, okay, now once you're grounded in it, this is what we all have to do. 77. <speaking in Hebrew> Sat sat yat vecha vasite Nyaye nani na vai va dehe Nyaye nani na vai va dehe Sad vas tu pravi vichyatam Sad vas tu pravi vichyatam Eva makasha mithyatve Sat sat yat vecha vasite Nyaye nani na vai va dehe sadvastu pravivichyata. So he says, evam, in this way, akasha mithyatve, knowing the unreality, the illusoriness of space, and sat satyatve, and knowing the reality of existence, reality of sat, vasite. Being firmly established in that, nyayena anena, anena, by this, what we saw, mana, pramana, the scriptures, by nyaya, yukti or logic, by dhyana, by contemplation, pravivichyata, now separate sadvastu, separate existence from what vaivade, from vayu, Adi means from air, fire, water, earth. So now, thus, when the unreality of Akasha and the reality of Brahman are firmly established in the mind, one should follow the same method and differentiate Brahman, whose nature is pure existence from air and the other elements. Hmm? So how we will do that, we will see next class. So next class, we will move to air. Now enough of space. Hmm? So I will just uh, summarize and then we can uh, we'll close and we can do questions and answers. So what does Swami Vidyaranyaji say? He says, come back to the logic of how space is illusory. Keep coming back to that logic. What is the logic? The logic is that there are two things. It's not one thing. There are two things. Their space and existence. First, know that. When, when we cognize space, know that there's space and existence. And it's not that existence is a property of space, but space is more like a property of existence. Why? Because existence is all pervading and space is less pervasive. Huh? Space is everywhere. 
I mean, uh, sorry, existence is all pervading and space is less pervasive. <laughs> existence is everywhere and space is limited. It has a limitation. And therefore, what's, what is the substratum is existence. Existence is a substratum and space is there. It's supported by existence. Okay? So I have existence. That existence supports space. Now, there are two things, existence and space, and they are different. So if existence is existence, then space is non-existence. But it appears, so it's illusory. So therefore, space is illusory. Hmm? And because space is illusory, then, then what? Then don't fuss about it too much. And that's what the people who have knowledge do. They root themselves in the reality of sat or existence. And they are rooted in the unreality of space or akasha. Through their deep contemplation, through their building that vasana, that deep impression, so much so, kadachit, they never mistake, never think space to be real. And they would never think that existence is contaminated by space at any, at any cost. And they are in wonderment of those who are so, so, so caught up in space and time. And they are the ones who truly enjoy and truly well because they are rooted in what's real. Hmm? So we'll stop here with a closing prayer. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vishishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Namaha Hari Om Okay.